get a tragic here and a big surprise for you today. Check it out. Whoa. But that's not it. That's not all, that's not all of it. Oh. Oh. There's even more. Even more. So, what is all this stuff? Basically, let's show you. sign it's been packed upside down <laughs> BAM it's another box and look what it is it's a new camera the XA50 and that's what basically is all this is about I have decided to reinvigorate this channel and get back into doing live plays. And I've decided to buy myself some brand new equipment. Basically what happened was, I was gonna go on a big holiday, but it fell through due to various reasons. So I had this money saved, so I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna buy that camera I've been talking about buying for about <laughs> 10 years. Let's just get all this stuff out. and show you it and you can see what it looks like. It's a little light. the new camera so it is a full 4k camera lots of zoom it's got a high high sensor there's a this attachment which I haven't properly attached yet which has a light on it as well as some sensor readings very, very cool. There's nothing else. There's nothing else in there. But that's not all. Wham! We've also got this. And what is this, you might ask? Well, let's find out. Myself. 
Bam! Still don't know what it is. Let's find out. And here it is. So these are lights. These are pad lights used to light the board games when I'll be playing them. I've got two of these things. They're nice and soft, they're LED. So I can change the colors, you know, warmer or harsher. I can also change the intensity. And what that should do is we have on the other side. Ooh. The stands. So I'll show all this in action in a sec. But if I look, if you look at the table, see those big spots on the table? here and here and here. Well, they're from the actual lights in the ceiling. So the way I basically light my, you know, proper videos when I was in the old house was I would fire lamps up to the white ceiling and bounce them back down. But this new lounge room has this big sort of you know, light thing here, which means that when I do that, I get a huge big shadow. But these new lights will allow me to light the whole video area, which I'll be able to capture in super high def 4K and have no hot spots rooting the shot. So it's gonna look a lot better. It's gonna sound better with the new mic and the new camera. And hopefully everything's gonna come together and look pretty damn awesome. I'm still waiting for one package to arrive, which is the new stand, which is also really exciting, which will be allow, which will allow me to do proper hover videos. So all my videos to date have been done with this little handy cam, and that's it. This is a 1080p handy cam, and it cost me, I think, $400 at the time which I thought was quite expensive, but it's done its prime. And you can see the stand I used to use as well. So when I was doing those Lord of the Rings videos, I was like sitting behind this and reaching around it like that. You know what I mean? And it was very, very awkward. The new stand, the camera will be able to swing away from the legs of the stand, meaning it will have proper bird's eye views. It's going to be awesome. Also, in 4K video, because I'll be able to capture at such high resolution, I'm going to be able to use software zooms inside the edit suite. So instead of repositioning the camera every time I wanted to zoom on a little area, I'll be able to just film a raw footage and then zoom in when I'm in the editing because I'll be uploading it at 1080p, but capturing it 4K. So there's so much more data than is gonna be on the screen. And we have another one. So this is a couple of days later, but the magic of editing will mean you will not be able to tell with any luck. So let's just open this up. And this is the last bit of equipment I'm getting for a while. I will probably invest in a proper microphone in the near future, depending on how things go. But for now, I think that's enough. So basically, this is just a camera stand for the new camera. And 
What's interesting is that it has this sort of bar that the camera sits on, which means I can place the tripod on the table away from the board and sort of swing the camera over the board for a bird's eye view without it being in front of me, leaving my hands free to operate the board or the cards or whatever in a much more comfortable way. So that is what this is for. That is pretty much the new stuff. This is the new, the new camera, if, just to remind you. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up a demo board on this table. So with the lights, making the big spots, filmed on the low camera, which is what I'm using now. And then I'm going to set up the new camera with the new lights just so we can see the difference and hear the difference in the new sound. Looking forward to that immensely. I just have to wait for one more package to turn up because because this is capturing it, you know, I think it's like 36 megabits 4K. I need a, a new SD card, like a, one of those super fast SD cards. So as soon as that comes, I'll, I'll do the demo test and we're pretty much done. Okay, so this is uh, the Euphoria board. What we're looking at here is the old camera with no none of the new lights. You can see the three dots. And if I want to zoom on a particular part of this board, I chose this board because there's a lot of information on this board. So say I wanted to choose this thing. If I zoom in in the software, like this, it gets kind of blurry. So the way I used to do it is I'd move, I'd move the camera, I'd position it, and I'd physically zoom in like so. And then I'd edit it. So all you would see is the cut. Okay, so that is how I used to do it. And that's a very simple move. Some of the moves are very complicated. Like for example, say I wanted to roll a dice. So every time you saw me roll a dice, I'd pick up the camera, come over here. And what I like to do is I like to make sure the top of the bowl is visible and the bottom of the bowl is just out of shot. So that's just a tiny bit too tight. So basically like that. Then I could just roll into it and do any Zoom software like that I wanted. So that is the way it used to be set up. Except of course, see how I have to move back to the original view. So all that was hidden through the editing. Now I can turn off one light. It's a little bit darker, but we don't have that spot. So now I'm going to set up the new lights and see how that works. Okay, so this is with the new lights on and this is with the ceiling lights off. One, two. Now, you'll note there is kind of a big shine still over there, which would matter for larger boards. And it's really the, whatever it's called, the, the table. You can see it's up there. You can barely see it. It'll try and focus it in with this camera. So I've got that one set to full and to white, and that one set to about half and to slightly yellow. But anyway, so this is what it looks like with the new lights. Quite a bit of shadow there. Now I'll probably have to play with these lights a bit to find out exactly. I mean, I literally just put them up in about 30 seconds. But anyway, let's move it back. You can kind of see all the 
editing, behind the scenes editing that I usually do in my videos that you don't see because I edit it all out. And uh, right, so this is all the original camera. Now I'm gonna plug in the new camera with the new stand and we'll see how that looks. Okay, I'm back on my phone. I've set up the, the new stand. And it has got some issues. I, I need to figure it out. I've got the old camera on it at the moment because I didn't want to drop it or anything. The problem is this bar isn't very long. And also the further out you go, the more the counterweight needs to be. There is something to put another camera here, but I basically will have to hang a sandbag on it to support the weight of this camera, which isn't exactly trivial. But if I hit the record, you can see I'm now in the view from that camera. You can see I'm now in the view from that camera and lots of, lots of ease of use. Now, I don't know if I'll be using this shot for everything. It does waste quite a bit because, you know, I've got the stick in the way. That one's out of shot just up there. Some fiddling and more care setting up the shot will probably fix that. But for things like playing Arkham Horror LCG or Lord of the Rings LCG, this is gonna be how to do it because I'll be able to just sit at the table as normal and play. For normal kind of things, I'll probably still use the old setup, at least at the beginning, because I know how to do it. A little disappointed with this camera, to be honest, uh, the stand. Basically what I need is a longer stick and a counterbalance to enable me to swing this over. Now that is as extended as far as it goes. It is just a pipe. It does have all these fancy grooves in it though, so it'll take me quite a lot to machine my own. But uh, I'll see what the camera store says. I don't want to spend any more money though at all. Anyway, so that's that. Now let's finally see it with the new camera and the new mic. But I prob probably will not set the new camera up like this, at least at first. Okay, so we're now on the new camera, on the stand, and with the new microphone. This is 4K, and again, I'll need to fiddle with lighting and figure out how to, the camera really functions. This is literally the first time I've pressed record. So because it's 4K, I should be able to do a software zoom into here and have it look really good. I should be able to get quite a large magnification without any kind of loss in perceptual quality because I'm not releasing the 4K video. Now, as for the rolling, we still have the same problem of me having to reposition the camera every time. But I do have a workaround for this planned. I can actually now have, because I've got a second camera, a permanently set up camera pointing at the dice tray or where I'm placing cards, I up and zoom out. I'm gonna have a nice spot to just slide in cards. But I'll probably just use this as a dice tray camera for now. And then what I can do is I can do an edit where I just edit in the throw into the video. And you shouldn't, hopefully, be able to tell the difference. So I'll be over here at this camera and I'll go, here's my card, figure out how I'm going to do a backlighting. Here's my card. Very, very nice. I need to roll the dice now. Bam! And then I go, okay, so I roll a blah, 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 and this thing kills this thing, and you know, that's, that's that. So, the other thing is, what about the zooms? So, if I can figure out how to do it, there's a button somewhere, and that is me doing a reposition and a zoom on a location of the board in the more the old way and just to do an exact example i'll just move this back get this tight on the board 
Okay, so there's lots for me to play with still. I still need to work out the best way to use this kind of thing, set it up and figure out what game I'm gonna run first. Okay, so I've just sort of finished doing the edit of this introduction video thing and test video. And there's a lot of things obviously that need to be fixed. I didn't check the white balance, so everything's blown out. I had the light too bright, so there's huge bright whites. I still had some pretty bad shadows in the dice tray and also the audio was pretty terrible uh it would the gain was turned up way high on the mic so it was all crackling and distorted I, I tried fixing it as i could in post but uh the audio of the microphone in the camera is much better than the one in my old camera which i usually use but i actually think the microphone in my phone is the best portable mic i have i do plan to buy a mic eventually but uh, not for now. But yeah, so there's a lot of stuff I need to do to work out how best to use it. Also, the uh, audio is being recorded in like 5.1 sound, which is way too hard for me to work with for the kind of stuff I'm doing. So I've got to figure out how to change how the audio is recorded. There's a lot of things to work out. So this is sort of just an initial test and I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously, you can't zoom in with the software too much. It still looks better if you do the positioning of the camera. All in all, uh, I think it does look a lot better. And I think it'll be a lot, especially once I get the, the swing arm thing working, being able to play without having the camera in front of my chest is going to be a huge game changer for me personally and may even set up the option of streaming. But that's pretty much it. That's all the new toys. So... I'll see you guys next time. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back.